back at it again and we've got one with joe rogan who has been in the news a little bit lately within the past week or so because he came out with a statement that everybody was like raising their eyebrows at because knowing joe rogan it was a little odd that he said what he said if you don't know what he said he said basically in short that he didn't want to have donald trump on his show and if you've ever watched joe rogan which i've watched a lot of his shows uh, one of my favorite <clears throat> podcasts to watch personally. He's had a lot of individuals on his show. So when he said that, it was really, really surprising. He's had everyone on his show. I mean, anyone and everyone that you can think of, he's had them on, on the show. Bernie Sanders included. <laughs> right? So when he said that, everybody was like, huh, that's interesting. Why is that? My estimation is that there's two reasons, possible reasons, I should say. Either the company that he signed a contract with that paid him like $300 million or some crazy number, they don't like Trump. And they've kind of like hinted towards him like, no, we don't want him on the show, on the platform. Like, yes, it's Joe Rogan's show, but I think they may have something to do with it. Or, and this is my second guess, he's going to surprise us all. And he's going to do a show with Trump next year at some point possibly have Trump want to announce that he's running for president and that is what is going to happen because I think if he does that that that'll be by far his biggest show ever everyone will tune in because of because of who Joe Rogan is and obviously because of who Trump is I think that'll be the biggest show Joe Rogan will ever have um in the history of his show but you guys can let me know what you think sorry that was super long-winded I know I don't normally talk at the very beginning of videos but let's dive in i think probably what happened was the response from donald trump the the response to donald trump being president he was so polarizing and he attacked people in a way that was so non-presidential and the way he would behave was so non-presidential that that's just his thing when someone comes <coughs> after him he comes back at them even harder yeah. but when you're the president and you do that it just gets everybody's panties in a wad yeah. and he's just <sighs> fucking taking gallons of gasoline and chucking it on the fire <laughs> and so when they got rid of him and they got him out of there they're like we gotta make sure that's that never, never happens, happens again, again. <coughs> well it's gonna happen again it's yeah. gonna happen again he's coming back and he, he might even win but the this polarization has like hardened them the thing with Trump because of Trump's behavior the way he communicates which I just think is a terrible way to communicate as a president but if you're his supporter you love it you're like yeah, yeah. stick it to him finally someone sticks up for us and so it's like yeah I get your feelings I understand why you would love that and I understand that he's right about many things there's a crazy video that's out there that shows all the things that Donald Trump predicted if Joe Biden gets in office and how all of them have taken uh, place. Have you seen that video? No. I'm gonna send it to Jamie because it's so wild. It's so wild. You watch it play out and you're like, holy <coughs> shit. Yeah. Because it's it's so crazy that um, it's it's that blatant. But like you would think, like, wait a minute, is it is this is this theatrical? I mean, this is. But crazy. At, a, at a point, you we're a two-party system with a. Uh, you know, nearly 50-50 split down the middle. Um, at no point w would I, in that presidential p position, like your job is to try to bring as many people from each respective side yeah. together. Yeah, bring everybody together. That not his approach? No. He's, <laughs> he's, that's why it's, it's so not, <clears throat> it's not how a leader behaves. Like he was very, he's got a huge ego, and that's what's led him to this amazing amount of success that he's had. But that huge ego, once he gets into a position of power, here, pray this from the beginning. I think the thing about Trump, because he said that's not what a good leader does. Leaders come in different shapes and forms, right? Not everybody leads the same way. I think Trump was more so a leader by action, by getting things done, by actually making change. He wasn't a leader in terms of, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, speak properly and have this speech that's super politically correct he wasn't that type of leader, so to speak. But for me personally, looking back on it, I definitely much rather have a leader that leads by just getting things done. I don't really care what you say too much as long as you're getting things done. But the problem is most of America cares more about what people say and not what they do, um, which is why you still have a lot of people enraged because the mainstream media 
said Trump said this or said that, and they just ignored what the economy was doing. They ignored what was in their pockets. They ignored all of this other stuff, how cheap gas was. They ignored all of that because the mainstream media said, hey, Trump said this. But now I think people are waking up. And as the Fox host said, I'll take some mean tweets and $2 gas. <laughs> Over this politically correct mumbo jumbo, reading off a teleprompter, read again. <laughs> Have you guys seen that clip where Joe Biden was reading off the teleprompter and he literally read the instructions? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll, I'll take what Trump was doing of what we got going on now. This politically correct $10 gas. Milk's about to be $15 a gallon. <sighs> I'll take Trump any day, every day, twice on Sunday. <laughs> this stuff is crazy that's out here. And most of America agrees at this point. And it's why I said in, in yesterday's video, Biden is actually bringing this country together in a weird way. He's actually reuniting us, just not the way that Democrats wanted us to be reunited. But let's jump back into the video. Yeah, give me some volume. Before I took office, there was a lot of folks out there, a lot of folks out there making some pretty bold predictions about how things would turn out. This video, hold on, remember? stop for a second. This video does not sound like that. It sounds fine. What's coming through uh, the computer? Why is that happening? Because I played it together today on my the volumes phone, turned up perfect. too high. They're coming for your guns. They're coming for <coughs> your jobs, and they're coming for your freedom. They hate American energy, and Joe Biden will shut it all down. He's going to. Uh, that if I became president, if Biden's elected. He will wipe out your energy industry. What a prediction! That is my favorite one. I must add. Is that I got elected? Gas prices going five, six, seven dollars for a gallon. <laughs> Flood your communities <laughs> with criminal aliens, drugs, and crime while they live behind beautiful gated compounds. They try. Yep. They're taking our weapons away while they have armed security. They walk around with, you know, AR 15s, bulletproof vests multiple people surrounding them the way that i see it if you're gonna take our weapons away you can have your security but your security isn't going to be armed how about that that will let me know if you truly care about the american public if you truly see yourself as better than the rest of us if we have to give away ours you give away yours i bet they wouldn't go for that though try to take away your gun second amendment they want to take it away while well, they enjoy private security that's fully armed. I never understood that one. They spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. Well, those predictions are doom and gloom. Say that again. Spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. Well, those predictions are doom and gloom six months in. Here's where we stand. You want to use the word recession or depression? Think of the single mom. Don't <laughs> we put food on the table this month? You know, it's, uh, it's sad. So if your primary concern right now is inflation. We could stop it in 30 minutes. When I took office. He finally went outside. He went to get an <laughs> ice cream. Look, the bottom line is this. I say you're not doing a very good job. This was campaigning pre-election. Now from the press. Yeah. Wow. It was him campaigning pre-election and what is actually taking place. I mean, I mean uh, it's just uncomfortable. It's wild. And what's interesting is even CNN is starting to push back against it. Like Don Lemon was interviewing the woman who is the new uh, press secretary for the White House. Yeah. And he was asking, is Joe Biden going to be fit for 2024? Oh, yeah, I saw like, that. He's fine. He's great. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And she made up some BS lie. I have a hard time keeping up with him. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, Miss uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, which I kind of do like the name, Jean-Pierre, not a bad name, but if I'm just being totally honest, if you have a hard time keeping up with Joe Biden, Miss Corinne Jean-Pierre, you may need to go see a doctor. You may need some medical attention.
and I'm being totally serious. I don't know how old Corinne Jean Pierre is, but she looks a whole lot younger. She's probably half the age of Joe Biden. So if you have trouble keeping up with him, you need to seek some medical attention in ASAP because you got some problems. I don't know what they are, but before they get any worse, get some medical attention, seriously. But of course, we all know she was lying. She was just saying that, which I guess I can't be too mad about because like I said before, it's technically her job. But I mean, come on, come on. And you're watching and you're going, what the fuck are you talking about? He's yeah. definitely not. That's not true. Like, you know, that's not true. Like you're gaslighting <laughs> us. Yeah, I saw Ocasio-Cortez asked if he, if she would support the president in a 2024 run. And, and she uh, didn't answer. Like, ah, you know, let's, let's talk about the issues that we're trying to fix right now. And, uh, and they're like, yeah. so would you support the president? You didn't answer me. That's mm. what the journalist uh -huh. asked her. And she's like, um, you know, we have issues right now that we need to address first. And like, and then she let her off, you know, but yeah, yeah, crazy. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be wild. I did see that interview as well. Uh, the interviewer was asking AOC if she would support Biden and she just basically wouldn't answer the question. She just danced around it, basically saying no without actually saying no to leave the door kind of open just in case there's some, you know, way that she can't get in office or run for office and Joe Biden kind of stands in a way, then she has to get behind it. Trump was 100% correct and apparently 81 million people did not listen and he was spot on. That's also scary too. <laughs> Mr. Trump, I got some questions for you. You know, it would be cool if I was able to get Trump right here on the show. I mean, I, I know that that would never happen. <laughs> Not in a million years it wouldn't happen. But that would be really, really cool if I got an interview with Trump. That that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I'd be I'd be well on my way to uh, competing with Joe Rogan with that one. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Joe Rogan's in a league of his own. All right. I'm, I'm just little old Doc Rich over here. All right. Don't mind me. But um, all seriousness. Looking back on, you know, the the Trump campaign trail and the things that he was talking about in those speeches, he was, I mean, 100 percent correct. The Second Amendment, gas prices going through the roof. And, you know, even if you want to go back to the Second Amendment, it literally says shall not be in friends and they don't care. They don't care at every twist and turn. Every every time some tragedy happens. Oh, um, um, gun control. Second Amendment. Take it away. You know, in this just just this recent situation that that happened, the guy dressing in women's clothes and sitting on the roof or something, it came back up. I mean, you you guys literally just passed what you wanted, just did it, just passed new new gun laws. Now they want to go back and do more. See, this was the problem from the beginning, though. It was never going to be enough until all guns were gone. It was never going to be enough, which is why I was disappointed that um, you know we we had some individuals agreeing with the new gun laws. Because I knew it was never going to be enough. They were going to take some now. As soon as the next tragedy happened, which it did, they were going to try to come back and take more. There's going to be another tragedy that happens. They're going to come back and take some more. I mean, it's, it's just never going to be enough. And we're never going to truly address the underlying issues that come before the weapon. People are led to this point. People don't, don't just hop up out of the bed and just all of a sudden, you know what? I'm taking this, I'm loading it up, and I'm going, you know, on a spree. Like there were some things that led up to that point. Instead of addressing what started that and led to it, we just want to address the end point, you know, where the weapon came into play. Instead of thinking about why did that person get to that point? Nobody talks about that, but um, it's unfortunate. It's sad to watch our, you know, our rights, our true rights get eroded. But as always, Y'all let me know what you thought about all of this in the comment section below. If you want to help the channel, hit that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Like I said earlier, YouTube hasn't been pushing out my videos more recently to the number of people that they were pushing it out to for whatever reason. I have my suspicions, but make sure you guys are hitting that like button, sharing these videos. It's the arrow button that is down below. You can copy the link and paste it wherever you like true social twitter instagram facebook you could text it to someone your neighbor your friend whoever all right make sure you guys are commenting in the comment section greatly appreciate every appreciate everyone that already has thank you guys so so much it all helps out with the youtube algorithm all right but peace and love
好吗？